In this video, I'm going to show you the most useful finger picking pattern you are likely to ever learn. It's known as the Travis picking pattern and can be found in literally thousands and thousands of finger picking songs. Today, I'm going to break the Travis picking pattern down for you in a way that helps you not only play it, but understand it. Hi, this is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net and learning the Travis picking pattern is like downloading thousands of finger picking songs directly into your fingers due to its vast use throughout so much music. It will seriously increase your finger picking repertoire fast. It's in understanding the pattern, not just blindly copying someone using it, that will enable you to apply it to your own playing. Too many people begin at the end, trying to play the pattern without breaking it down first and understanding it. It's doing this that will have you master the Travis picking pattern. In this lesson, I'm going to take you through a number of Travis picking exercises that deal with each component of the pattern. The most important part is the bass and developing the independency between your thumb that will be playing the bass and the fingers of your picking hand. I will show you very effective ways to develop this independence before looking at a number of very common Travis picking bass patterns. Okay, so let's begin with the most important part of the pattern, the bass. It appears to be, in a lot of ways, the simplest part perhaps, particularly when we isolate it, but it's very important to work on because it's got to get to a point where it's just automatic and whatever else your fingers are doing, this thumb it has its, you know, it's its own entity, if you like. It's one part of the pattern and it's uh, very important to have it going where you don't have to think about it. So we need to isolate it and work with it. There's only a select group of bass patterns that you can play with this particular pattern. Overall, the finger picking pattern, Travis picking pattern. Um, and that's good. It keeps it very simple. There's in fact really two and then there's a variation of each one. And we've got a pattern that we use for chords where the root note falls on string six. So for example, if I've got my G chord here, I've got the root note on string six. So for this sort of a uh, chord, my bass pattern would be six, four, six, four. Okay, you'll find that your bass pattern is not only played with the thumb, but typically it's going to fall on the lower three strings, the bass strings of your guitar. Okay, and the name of this pattern is taken from where the notes fall in terms of the string number. The sixth string, the fourth string, the six, the four. So we call it a six, four, six, four, and it's always on the beat. That's the other very, very important part here to, to be aware of. It's always falling on the beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's very important because that's going to be a great reference point for, you know, when your fingers are doing, you know, certain things on the higher strings, as we'll see shortly. For a root five chord, chord whose root note is on the fifth string, for example, a C chord, um, we would play a 5-4 bass pattern, okay? Again, named after the strings the bass notes fall on. The 5th string, the 4th string, 5th, 4. And again, it's on the beat. 1, 2, 3, 4. So when you practice this, you want to count the beat as you practice it. So you're aware that you're on the beat the whole time. Play it to time. Don't just play it as a sort of pattern without any reference to tempo. Unless, of course, you're getting used to just the basic pattern first. That'll be okay. Now, for each one of those patterns, there's a variation. So if I come back to my root 6 G chord here, there's a variation that you might want to use sometimes because it's more suitable or you just prefer the sound or the song you're learning has this particular variation in it. And that is a 6, 4, 5, 4. Again, named after the strings the bass notes fall on. The 6th string, the 5th, the 4th. Oh, sorry, I said that the wrong way. 6, 4, 5, Four, right? The sixth string, fourth, fifth, back to the fourth string. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. If it's my C chord, it's a five, four, six, four. That's the variation of the root five pattern. Again, named after the notes, the strings rather that the notes fall on. Five, four, 
six, four. The difference here is, you might notice already, you might have picked up on it. When I go to the sixth string, I need to move the finger that's currently on the fifth string, on the root note of the C chord at the third fret, and I need to move it to play the G note at the third fret on string six. Okay, we can't just play the open string here. We need to you know, move to that G note to complete the pattern. So there's a little movement if you use this varied pattern on the C chord. Five, four, six, four. Five, four, six, four. Okay, but that's not always the case. If I have an A minor chord, for example, I can play five, four, six, four, five, four, six, four. And in this case, the E note is what we want to hear. So we don't need to move any fingers when we go to the sixth string. Okay. One last thing, when you practice the bass in isolation, as you should, don't underestimate how simple it, it, it appears to be. It's very important to practice in isolation. Um, don't just sort of swing at the strings with your thumb and have all this movement in the hand like you use in a pick. Keep the three fingers of your finger picking hand just planted down on the three strings, the top three strings of your guitar. And when you practice the bass, they stay grounded or anchored down there and keep your hand in position and then your thumb plays the bass. And as you can see, the thumb is only moving at this point. The hand is stationary, the arm is stationary, the wrist is, is still. It's The movement is coming from the base of the, the thumb. And the thumb is locked in place straight at a basically 45 degree angle, typical picking, finger picking hand position. And whatever chord you're playing, whatever bass pattern you're playing, keep these three fingers anchored down and just have the thumb moving. Because you've got to you know, learn these patterns, see how they apply to each chord, um, whether it's root five or root six, and you've got to build the strength as well and the endurance in the thumb. So practice the bass because it's the most important part of this uh, finger picking pattern. Okay, so before we get into some common Travis picking patterns, um, I want to just spend a little moment on some very effective ways to develop the independency between your thumb and your picking fingers, your fingers are gonna pluck notes higher up on the chord, various patterns and so forth. It's very important, that's one of the key aspects of finger picking in general, but certainly with the Travis picking pattern here, okay? So we're actually gonna do something here that won't require your fretting hand. We wanna simplify it so we can just focus on the picking hand. You could do this with a chord, that's fine, but you don't really need to, so you might as well just rest your, your fretting hand, okay? But what we're gonna do here, is we're going to get the thumb and the fingers working together but independently they're each going to have a role here okay we already just talked about the thumb and what its role is in the travis picking pattern um, we're going to simplify it here for the purpose of you know developing this independency so the thumb is actually going to still play on the beat because that's what it's always doing with the travis picking pattern but we're just going to play the sixth string one two three four like that one two three, four, that's it, okay? That's all the thumb's doing, that's its job, to play on the beat and just the sixth string. And then I'm gonna use my ring finger of the same hand to pluck the open first string, okay? And I'm gonna begin by plucking that open first string on the first beat, so it would sound like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? Very simple, but those now, the fingers and the thumb are working independently of each other. You've got two parts happening at once here. You've got the thumb going two, three, four, okay, with the bass, and you've got the finger going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and together they go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? It's very simple but it's where we start to build the independency between the thumb and the fingers, particularly if you're pretty new to finger picking and certainly also if you're new to the Travis picking pattern. What we do then is move that note that we're playing on the higher string around the bar. So we could play it on the second beat, all the while the thumb is doing the same thing as playing on the beat. So we could do this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, okay? Or we could play it on the third beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? 
Notice I'm counting as I do this. We want to be aware of where we are in the bar so we can come in with this open string on each beat. So we're going to come in on the fourth beat now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I've just moved it around. The whole time the thumb is staying nice and consistent on the beat and in fact just on one string at the moment. What you can do next just to make it a little bit more challenging is come in with this open string on the off beat in between the bass hits. Something like this. One and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. Or on the end of two. One, two and three, four. One, two and three, four. Okay? Or any of the other off beats. You get the idea. I won't go through every possible combination here, but this starts to get the hand, or the thumb rather, and the fingers of your picking hand working independently of each other. Now we can also just you know, do combinations of on and off the beat with this finger here while the thumb's playing the bass. Something like this one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So here I'm playing one and then on two with the open string and then three and four. Okay, that was my combination there. Or you could do anything, any combination. And if you can get it to a point where you're just making it up as you go and the thumb is keeping a steady beat behind you on the beat, then you've got it. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and one. Okay, so I'm just making that up there, but the whole time my thumb is playing the bass. And this is a great little uh, interim exercise, if you like, between working on the bass of the pattern and then working on the Travis picking pattern as a whole. This just gets the two parts, the bass, the thumb, and the higher part of the chord with the fingers working independently of each other. If you want, then, you could also start to alter the bass as you do this by moving it between say the sixth and fourth strings so what would happen here is you would go if we did the you know on the beat one two three four one two so now i've got movement in my bass with a six four pattern or i could do you know one and two three four one and two and three four one two okay so the idea is that it's exactly what we we're just doing before but now i'm bringing in a, you know the 6-4 pattern or any of the other patterns okay and that's just building the independency between the two parts that's the key to the Travis picking pattern if you would like further help with your finger picking the kind of help that gets you results in the most direct efficient and fun way possible then check out the ultimate finger picking guitar course I've carefully designed this course to do all the heavy lifting for you as far as knowing exactly what to do how to do it and when to do it in regard to mastering the art of finger picking guitar. All you have to do is follow the pathway I have laid out for you. In the ultimate finger picking guitar course, you will learn and master all the key concepts, methods, strategies, and techniques needed for finger picking so you'll never put your guitar down in frustration again thinking, How the hell do I do this? You will also discover the exact order in which to do things, avoiding the all too common mistakes most people make when learning to finger pick guitar. This will save you precious time and frustration. Have your hand held every step of the way with the ultimate finger picking guitar course. It will take you from wherever you are right now with your finger picking to where you would love to be, enjoying every part of the process along the way. So click the link below in the description of this video and check out the ultimate finger picking guitar course. Let me know in the comments section what other guitar topics you would like to see covered in future videos. It's always great to hear what you've got to say. If you like this video, then hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so YouTube can tell you when I next release a video. This is Simon Candy from Acoustic Guitar Lessons Online and as always, thank you for your time and for watching this video and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.